<laughs> Thank you. And warmly greeting to everyone. And uh, I'd like to thank Nestor in a very special way for his uh, prayer and the rest of you, my brothers and sisters, for your blessings and your prayers. And, uh, and what a joy. It's wonderful to be invited to share with you all. I hope you all can hear me clearly. Thank you and praise the Lord. Uh -huh. I'm here with Deacon Simeone. He's just sitting beside me. He's my, uh, my technician and he's uh, keeping a close eye to the uh, technicality side of this marvelous uh, instrument that will keep us tonight together already in the spirit as we prayed and uh, particularly with the rosary of our blessed mother and uh, you may see behind me red is the divine mercy uh, picture as well as our blessed mother with the miraculous uh, medal uh, a statue, a picture. So, um, so tonight I'm greatly honored to be invited to speak uh, with you. I recall last uh, couple of years, and uh, that was uh, 2018, September. I still remember vividly the warmth and the uh, welcome you had given to me. I still remember all your holy faces. So how blessed I am again here in uh, September 2020 to be invited again. Uh, I know it's a very difficult time in our world today. And, uh, and the topic you have asked me to share about tonight is uh, quite fitting and timely as it's stated times of refreshing. There is a uh, saying uh, from the Chinese people, I think one of the proverbs, every crisis is an opportunity. And I think uh, your topic, as your topic says, times of refreshing, it's, it's kairos, it's God's time. It's an opportunity for us perhaps to refresh, to refresh, to renew, to renew our faith. And so thank you for choosing uh, that uh, subject. And it is very much based as, as you have given me on a piece of scripture taken from Matthew 11 verses 29 and 30. It's an invitation of consolation. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What are consoling words in this so difficult time that we all experience? So, um, I like to also share my condolences and sympathy, perhaps for so many families, perhaps uh, some of your own family members, loved ones, perhaps have been affected by this COVID-19. Uh, I think maybe also many people lost their jobs and I must say that I stand together with you all in prayers. So as your subject chosen, it is an opportunity, a time for us to perhaps to renew our faith, to come to Jesus again. As chapter 11 of Matthew invites us to take his yoke upon all of us and find that rest once again. So my brothers and sisters, it's an opportunity for us to renew our faith, to turn back again to scripture, to find a renewal of our commitment 
in our discipleship, in our own call uh, to, to follow Jesus. In Tonga, we have cyclones. Um, this year, we experienced a double whammy. When the announcement of the COVID-19 was pronounced, everything, everybody got ready. Not long after that, there was this cyclone Harold struck Tonga. So we too, although we are still safe from COVID-19, we too also experience our, our own hardships and difficult times here. So here we are in this difficult time. I'd like to share a little story with you, uh, if you do not mind uh, tonight. And it was a story of this airplane. It was packed and supposed to fly from, from uh, this airport into its destiny. It's supposed to be a two-hour flight. But then as the plane flew over, one hour finished, and then coming to two hours and people, they were warned that there would be a little storm on the way. But then it took uh, over the time expected. Then uh, soon the pilot informed the passengers, uh, giving them uh, two information. And he said, one, it sounds a good news. That we are picking up momentum, although we were warned that there would be a little storm on the way. So we are picking up when the sad news is we seem to, to lose our destination. In a way, this time of COVID-19, it's a time that perhaps inviting us to look at our destiny, to ask deep essential questions about ourselves, to look back as our topic, our subject for tonight, to renew ourselves, to re-examine our personal relationship with God. So here we are together, listening to those consoling words from the scripture. I like also to share another little story. And by the way, I try to be uh, just sharing stories, hoping, and that is my hope, to just perhaps to give us encouragement, to give us hope. And, and this story, uh, there was this again, I love telling uh, flight airplane stories. So this, uh, this plane, you know, caught up with turbulences on the way. And there was this young little girl sitting in the uh, front seat with an elderly, elderly person. And as the plane was in turbulences, you know, in big trouble, and this elderly man noticed the young little five-year-old. She just kept on playing with his cube. So this man said to the young girl, sweetie, aren't you afraid? Can't you feel that we are in trouble? And the little young girl just said, no, because I know the pilot is in my daddy. He is my daddy. So that little simple story in a way reminds us or even challenges us of this very difficult time. It's perhaps it's calling us to relook really at how much we trust in such a difficult time. And that's why I put up this little picture of the divine mercy. I think in these days, Sister Faustina is quite timely also in the message of trust, as this little simple story tells us. It's just a simple trust that it is the Lord is still with us as we continue our journey. And likewise, this miraculous medal of our Blessed Mother bringing here to join us in our recollection tonight. She is always praying for us at this difficult time. She was the person 
still under the cross in that very difficult moment where our Lord himself suffered in the cross. And there she was with other women. And that's why it's quite symbolic at three o'clock for those who really devoted to the divine mercy. This is the most difficult time, uh, typical of the time that the Lord himself suffered. And there, his mother was there right at the foot of the cross. So once again today, my dear brothers and sisters, we may be tossed around in our own leadership as we journey in such a strange, gloomy, dark times in our world. You know, I recall my dear brothers and sisters in the day of my Episcopal ordination, as we were all lining out from the cathedral uh, at the end of the ceremony, a brother bishop of mine from the, one of the Pacific Islands, he tapped me on the shoulder and he said to me, he whispered to me something I also like to, to share with you. He said to me, welcome brother, welcome to the team. It's going to be a big cross but it's gonna be a beautiful cross. And what an encouragement. To me, when I first heard it, it's gonna be a big cross, brother. And then whisper closely to me, a beautiful cross. Keep that cross shine. And I think that is what this time is all about in a way. It's an opportunity for us to relook again to our own calling, our baptismal vows. It's call us to let that cross that we have. I have so many families that experienced this anxiety in their lives. Bring those crosses to the Lord himself and allow our Blessed Mother, as she does throughout time, to keep on praying for all of us. So I would never forget that encouragement given to me or my brother bishops. So I also thought tonight, brothers and sisters, of another encouraging words from St. Paul. To me, it's quite fitting at this time too. In his letter, second letter to the Corinthians, chapter four, verse eight to 10. I think it's quite familiar to all of us at this time. As it says, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our own bodies. These are very encouraging words, my brothers and sisters, at this time, as we try to carry our own crosses and follow Jesus, offer our crosses to him, and ask for that grace to refresh our love for him to find our true rest as our theme says to all of us, to rest in him. So as we come together at this time, let us continue to pray for one another, to pray for each other and even perhaps to share our own crosses. So we come back again to our main text, consoling words of Jesus who often says, fear not, to his disciples. Again, he's saying that to us. He is with us. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. When I see this key word, be gentle, I remember when I went to seek for reference from the school, the secondary school that I went to, so that uh, a reference be given to me so that I entered the seminary in 19, 
83. Father Mick Cross, rest in peace. He got my reference. He looked at my record. And then he came to me and said to me, I'm going to drop you home. So when he dropped me at my home, he grabbed my shoulder. And he said three verses to me. I didn't really understand them. He said to me, God has given and forgiven you. The church has forgiven you. Now be gentle with yourself. Somehow this priest knew something about me. So he asked me, or even challenged me then, be kind to yourself. Be gentle with yourself. So in other words, he said to me, you are going to enter the seminary. You are going to try yourself to follow to be a disciple. as a pastor, as a priest. But then he instructed me with a very essential advice. Be gentle with yourself. So to me, I think in our world today, no wonder Pope Francis had declared a year of mercy. He is challenging the world today to be tender, to be more loving to one another, to be gentle with ourselves, to begin with ourselves. So to me, my brothers and sisters, it's very important our theme to take heed as I come now close to the final part of my little sharing with you. That key word in our text today also, the yoke, to carry his yoke and share Jesus' yoke. We all know what a, a yoke means, especially in rural areas. It's a wooden cross piece on top of the neck of an ox or a, a bull. And uh, so the two animals would share this cross piece on their shoulders so that it will lighten the load. It will also um, help them in a way to be uh, carrying the load in an even, even way, balanced way. So Jesus used that analogy, used that metaphor, if you like, as he challenges each and every one of us to carry our own yoke with him. But we have to lighten our own yoke. I think we all know there is, a, there is a saying, everyone is yoked to someone or something. The question is, what is that someone or that something? So we have to really, really lighten our yoke. And I think in our world today, the big challenge now is we are so enslaved or yoked in human pride in sin and perhaps selfishness. So it is, as I said before, it's an opportunity at this time of COVID-19 to refresh, to renew our lives, especially our life as disciples, to renew our own commitment by looking sincerely and honestly at ourselves, at our own human weaknesses, our own sinfulness. So it's, it's a challenging, challenging piece of scripture reading for us uh, today as we share the loads with one another. So finally, as I come to a little conclusion, I don't want to keep you uh, uh, long, is that the Lord himself said, Come and take my yoke and share my gentleness and share a lowly in heart. I think this is also a great challenge in these days. As, as I said before, we are surrounded in pride. I think, therefore, we need that rest. We are so distracted. A lot of things that we are divided, our hearts and our minds in these days. And I think this uh, tragic uh, pandemic, in a sense, is a call for us to slow down, to find that rest, that rest of God. I think when we 
look at this word is its biblical meaning uh, we can recall therefore the book of genesis where god rested on the seventh day the day of the lord so it's a key word for us that rest that presence of god we started our recollection tonight by singing god's praise by singing his peaceful presence so god's rest takes us to think of the very beginning of creation that god created the world and on the final day god rests in other words he look at the wonders of his creation the beauty of god of the garden of paradise and that rest is the orderly, or, orderliness, if you like, of God's presence in his creation. I have a friend. She used to come and see me with a little crisis in her family. And then one day he came, she said to me, she, she came and said, every time he visited this little garden, she experienced somehow a little refreshment, refreshing time in her life. So I think the rest of God symbolically reminds us it's an orderliness, the wholeness in his presence. I think this is quite challenging and that we need that time. So we take the opportunity, my brothers and sisters, in this COVID-19 time, it's a time for a little silence perhaps. It reminds us of Psalm 46 verses 10. Be still and know that I am God. We need a time to steal, to stop, slow down a little bit. It reminds us of the call of Elijah. Elijah escaped. It was a critical time in Israel. And he was running away into the wilderness, the desert. In other words, he was looking for the peace or the presence of God. And there he was in the desert, praying. And then there was a fire, there was wind, there was an earthquake. That's only in the gentle breeze that he found peace, or in other words, he found God's presence. This is the rest that we must find. We must give ourselves that opportunity, that stillness in our heart. Because man can be restless our busy life these days so my brothers and sisters let us take the opportunity again at this time to experience that perhaps that silence that peaceful silence of God's presence in our lives maybe some people they love beautiful harmonic music God can reveal his presence in some time in music, enjoying nature. Perhaps let nature speak into our hearts. So as we continue our journey, let me make then a little final point. Perhaps in to put into a nutshell, this beautiful reminder, this piece of scripture for us. I think it's a call for humility, a call for repentance. Humility of the cross. So I think it's a time for us to renew our desire for God, an inner longing for Jesus. In Tonga, we have this omu. Omu is the way we cook food. We dig the ground, you know, and we hit the stone. We are just like you guys from the Philippines in Asia. We love eating. We enjoy party like that in Sassari. But anyway, there are two main um, tasks in order to keep that umu or the stone heated up so that the food will be all cooked. One is called hunwaki. Hunwaki means you put more fire. You feed the fire so that it keeps. And the second way of keeping the, the stone hot so that the food will be well cooked, it's called tapili. Tapili is fanning, fanning the, uh, 
the fire. So Hunuaki feed more. The building you fan. Remember what St. Paul said to young Timothy? To fan, as I remind you, to rekindle the gift of God that is within you. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power and love and self-control. So my dear brothers and sisters, as we experience this tragic time, let us continue to feed more fire. Let us continue to fan the Holy Spirit, the spirit of his love. And let us bring all our burdens, our crosses. Give our yoke, allow Jesus' yoke together with us as we walk through this very difficult time. And may his word and may his light continue to show us the way so that we will be on track and never to lose our destiny. And we keep looking at his face and also allow his blessed mother, our blessed mother, keep on praying for all of us as we journey along in hope and in joy as we share our yoke together with the Lord. May the word of God continue to bless each and every one of us. Amen.